All right, so now we've learned how to rewrite. The second part is going to be evaluating. Now, evaluating is like simplifying, but I, you could do this on your calculator. I want you to practice without your calculator, okay? When you're evaluating, you're trying to make it so it's something simple without a logarithm. And the, this will come more naturally as we go over this. But let's look at log base 2 of 8. I'm wondering, what does that simplify to? Well, let's practice rewriting this. If we were to do the circle of life here, how would I rewrite it, Caleb? What do we start with? Or well, let me let me write it like this. So instead of a question mark, let's put an X over here. Yeah. With the circle of life, we start with a two, and what are we going to raise two by? And then that will be equal to. Eight. So I'm thinking, what power of two gives me eight? And that'd be three, because two times two times two is eight. So this is three. Now, you'll have ones like this on your home. Are you saying is this on your notes or your home? Is this on our notes? Am I writing? Yeah, this is on your notes, right? Oh. Is it on the back page? Yeah. Oh. So guys, how do I check it? I go on my calculator, math up, up, log base 2 of 8. Is it 3? Mm -hmm. And it is. Good job, okay? So with evaluating, the way I do it is I rewrite it, and then I think, hey, what would give me that value? And then that's my answer. Let's try another one. Let's do log base 4 of 1. So I'm going to think that same thing. What is this equal to? Let's do circle of life. Skylar, how would I redo, how would I rewrite this doing circle of life? Oh, no. Well, so I already have the log, so I want to do it to an exponential. If it, if it's 1, it would be always. So I, I'm, I'm trying to take this. And I want to rewrite it just like what we did here. So I'm going to rewrite it to log base 4 of 1 equals x. So I don't know what that's equal to, right? How would I rewrite that as a, an exponential? Using our kind of circle of life circle thing like what we did here. Or raised to the x equals 1. Would you guys agree with that? Oh, you're getting ahead of the game there, Mindy. But right here, what power of 4 gives me 1? Well, I know 4 to the 1 is 4, 4 to the 2 is 16. So it's got to be lower. 4 to the 0.5? 4 to the, no, this is going to be what power of 4 gives me 1? And it's 4 to the 1 would give me 4. Because if it's that same, and we'll see that soon. But what power of 4 gives me uh, 1, and it's going to be 0. Yep, it's true. We'll see that in a second. But guys, if you wanted to put this in your calculator, log base 4 of 1, it would give you 0. Okay, well now let's do log base 7 of 7. What is that equal to? Well, let's try to rewrite this. I would say 7 raised to what power gives me 7? Well, if... 7 is just by itself, then what is its exponent? 1. It's just 1, so this is just it's 1. Minus. Yeah, it's one of those things we don't write it, but it's there. These are actually properties we're going to talk about in a second. Well, let's go to the top two. They're a little bit trickier. Log base 5 of 1 over 25. I'm going to set that equal to x, okay, just to make that a little easier. I'm going to start by having Brian. Will you rewrite that for us? How would I do circle of life for this one right here? Not quite. Start with your base. So I know with the parentheses it's a little tricky, but what is the base? Five. Five. That's going to get raised to the x. And then what will that be? There we go. That's how we rewrite. 
5 to the x is equal to 1 over 25. So I'm thinking, what power of 5 makes it 1 over 25? Well, what if it was just 25? What power of 5 gives you 25? Now, this is 1 over 25, so how do you make it a fraction? Put a negative in it. You put a negative in it, so this is negative 2. So remember, a negative exponent makes it change position, so this went from the numerator to the denominator. So negatives make it fraction. All right, last one on this page, we have log base 3 of the square root of 3. What is that equal to? Now, this is something we... Don't spoil it. Okay, let's start by rewriting this thing. Just like the circle of life, we've done it already five ti four times on this one. Nelly, how would I rewrite log base 3 square root of 3 equals x using the circle of life? We're doing this one right here. So we're going to start with a 3 raise it to the x, and what is that going to be equal to? We'll have to, we'll to go back to that square to see right here. So we did. X, Three to the x, or question mark, you can let it be whatever you want. I know, but you put square root of x. Equal, oh, equal square root of three. That's fine. Yeah. Is that like, better? You can't give me two variables. Okay, guys, so 3 raised to what power gives you the square root of 3? We talked about this last time. There you go. The square root of x is just x to the 1 half. Do you remember we said the cube root of x was what? 1 third. 1 third, and the fourth root was 1 fourth, right? You needed that for your quiz? Yeah. So then, what power of x is going to make this turn into a square root? The answer is 1 half. And again, you could check that by using your calculator. But I want you to be able to figure this out without your calculator, OK? When I've given this test before, I have a calculator section and a non-calculator section. Not sure if we'll do that this year, but you should be prepared just in case. OK, so that's evaluating. That's when you're trying to simplify it without a calculator. So. On this page, we have a few more. Some of them are easy, some are a little bit trickier. Um, what I want you to do is try to do the ones by hand that you can do by hand. And if you don't know what you're doing, then use your calculator. And even if you do it by hand, then check your work on your calculator, OK? All right. I'll give you about two or three minutes to try this one. That's not quite a good thing. We'll talk about it in a second. All right, so guys, right now, I, I want you to do the, your notes. You're not doing your homework. I want you to go over these ones. one of these and tell us how you did it. Um, Which one? B? Okay, yep. cool. How'd you do it? Um, four, awesome. So then what power of four is going to give you 32? Um, 
So that would be 4 times x is 32. But if I did 4 to the 8, that would be 4 times 4 times 4, 8 times, and that would be a lot bigger than 32. Is this one that we could figure out in our head? Probably not, because 4 squared is 16. What's 4 to the 3rd? That's not correct. No. It's not? Uh, yeah, it's not. Because if I, so guys, 4 oh squared is 16. 4 cubed is 64. 64. So it's going to be somewhere between there. It's 2.5. This is where you're going to use your calculator. Okay. <laughs> and basically we're going, to, we're going to put log base 4 at 32 in your calculator. And what does it give you? Now, will you check that for me? Is 4 to the 2.5, is that 32? Okay, cool. So that's how we do that. Thanks, Ambriana, for helping there. Two and a half. And now, guys, if you wanted to see what was going on there, two and a half is really five halves, right? So I have 4 to the 5 halves. What's going on there? Remember that 1 half? That's like the square root of 4, but then we're raising that to the fifth power. What is the square root of 4? 2. 2, and what's 2 to the 5th? It's 32. So what I'm saying here is that 2.5 is 5 halves, and that's kind of doing two things. Not only is it doing the 5th power, it's doing a square root, and you get the answer that way. That's just how you can simplify it. All right, cool. Let's do a different one here. So, Louise, did you do one of these that you could tell us how you did? How'd you do A? Good, so what power of X gives you 125? 5 times 5 is 25. Times that by 5 again, and you get 125. There you go, that's a pretty easy one. Nice job. Okay, let me jump over to C. So on C, I would say, what power of 64 gives me 1 over 32. A negative power, that's all I need. Yeah, good. Well, it's good to recognize that it's going to be, since it's a fraction, it'll be a negative. But then if I don't know these, that's when I'm going to go back and plug it in. What did you guys get here? It's less than a whole number. It's negative 0.83. Repeat. Negative 5, 6. Which is negative 5, 6. It's got to be less than 1, because the, the fraction denominator is less than there you go. That's a good thing to point out as well. Okay, no, I know what it's not, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> okay, exactly hopefully you guys three, I hope that you're starting to see this. I would say on three, I'm looking at 49 raised to what power gives me seven. Well, we were talking about earlier how you'd get from one or the other, but what, how do I get from 49 to 7? What do we have to do to the 49? You have to, like, square root it. Square root one it, half. and then how do you take the square root? You do one half. A one half power, one so one this half. tells me that x is one half. Because if I do 49 to the one half, that's the square root of x, and that 40 square root of 49 is 7. All right, last one on here, number four. We're going to send this one to Oscar. How would I rewrite number four, Oscar? Good, but do two raised to the x, because when you say two x, it makes it sound like you're multiplying, right? How many times do I have to times two by itself until I get 16? What did you get to that simplify to? And it's going to be 2 to the 4th, right? Because 2 times 2 is 4, so that's squared. 2 cubed is 8. 2 to the 4th is 16. So the answer is 4. So this is what you guys are going to be doing on the last part of your assignment, is it's going to have more practice like this, OK? Now I'm just going to quickly go over some properties and two special types of logs. It really won't be anything too crazy here. Um, <laughs> Plug these in on your calculator. 
one, one, one. <laughs> you. It's the bike. We already did this. Mindy, if I were, ever went to like a movie with you, you would just spoil all of I it. Don't, I don't spoil it. I would be I, watching and you'd be like, oh, he's been dead the whole time. That's because I just figured it out. You just <laughs> ruined it for everyone else, Mindy. All right, go ahead. Plug these in on your calculator. Log base 4 of 1, log base 8 of 1, log base 10 of 1. And then do log base 4 of 4, log base 8 of 8, log base 10 of 10. What does that simplify to? Hopefully you can do that in about a minute here. Alright guys, what do you get? Log base 4 of 1 is? Log base 8 of 1. Log base 10 of 1. So guys, what are we seeing here? If your argument is 1, regardless of what the base is, what are you going to get? So there's your first property. Now this other one, what's log base 4 of 4? Log base 8 of 8. Log base 10 of 10. What is a property there? There you go. Maddie, will you say that? You were saying it. I want you to say it instead of Minnie saying it. There you go. So if they match. Guys, write this down. B is going to be any positive number. Real number. So if I have... One in the argument, no matter what the base is, it's going to be zero. If the base and the argument are the same, it's going to simplify to one. So those are two properties that could help you out here. All right, now, before I get into the next thing, look, this is totally different. I'm going to talk about two types of logarithms. The first type is called a common logarithm. What does it mean if something is common? It happens a lot. We see it frequently. For example, let me just show you something. Here in, it's pretty common in math for us to see an x. Now, what is a coefficient of x? What's the number in front? It's not written, but it's a 1. Why don't we write a 1? So it's kind of implied that it's there. What's the exponent? What is the denominator? Zero, Mindy. Zero. Zero of them. Now look, would it be kind of annoying to write I have one times x raised to the one over one? I would hate math problems being a little bit so fast. Instead, you just put x, right? It's just simpler. Well, what we're going to see is when we're dealing with a common logarithm, that is the most common type of logarithm is a base ten. It's so common, in fact, that we're not even going to write it. So if you ever see that there's a log and there's no base, what does that mean it is? It's base 10. It's base 10, okay? So now, if you don't see it, just write it in there. Oh, that's a 10. If you ever see a common log, it's easy to evaluate. You just need to remember the base is 10. So for example, I want to know what log base 10 of 1 is. Well, pause. You just saw this. Anytime you get a 1 here, what does that mean? going to be a zero. The reason why is because 10 raised to what power is going to give you 1? And then the other one is 1. And then on this one, hey look, log base 10 of 10, they're matching. What does that mean it's going to become? 1. Question. Yeah, that's right. Um, just go. I don't need to call that. Last one. What power of 10 gives you 100? Because 10 squared is 100, right? All right, so that's the first type of logarithm you're going to see a lot is the common logarithm. If you look on the left side of your calculator, do you see the button that says log? It does it automatically. That's a base 10, so you don't need to do math up up. If you just push the log, that will automatically do base 10. So hurry and check it. Will you just do log 1 on the left side? What's so important about 
and log 10 and log 100. Check that. Think of our counting system. We go, our counting system is base 10. We go to 10, and we go to the next one, and it goes in tens, and then goes from there. So since our number system is a base 10, this is the most common type of logarithm. My number system is base 12. All right, so now what I want you guys to do, practice rewriting these logs right here, these three. And then you can check your work. How do you know they're common logarithms? They have base 10. No, they don't have any base. Oh, yeah, well. Then that's how you know they're common logarithms. Then I want you to plug in these three on your calculator, okay? So just take a couple of practice, rewriting, evaluating. Let's go over this. Log 100 equals 2. How would I rewrite that? Oh, well, no. My, you broke my calculator with the third log. <laughs> hold on. Let's start from the beginning. No, 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 so no, if no. I see a log with no base, guys, what does that mean the base is? 10. 10. So I'm going to start with 10. And I'm going to rewrite it. 10 squared equals 100. Is that a true statement? Yes, because 10 times 10 oh. is 100. So if you don't see a base, write it as 10. Antonio, what am I going to do on this next one down? Is that a true statement? 10 to the negative 1 is 1 tenth? Yes. There you go. Good job. Last one on here for the rewriting. Send that to Melissa. She just went to the bathroom. Not her. Raylan, how would I rewrite log 1,000 equals 3? What would the base be if it's hiding? 10. Now let's rewrite it with the 10. We're going to start with 10. And we'll say 10 to the third equals what? Is that true? 10 times 10 times 10, 1,000? Yes. yes. Awesome. Okay, now I'm going to go with these ones. I'm just trying to simplify. Those are too complicated for me to do in my head. So I put them in my calculator no. and just go... I think on your homework, does it, does it tell you how far to go? Use a calculator to approximate each to the nearest 10,000. How many decimals is that? Three. No, four. Four, because you have tenth, hundred, thousand, ten thousand. You're going to do four decimal places. So 34.5, give me that log 34.5 to four decimal places. 1.537. It might be 7, 9. So I have that. Five, three, seven, eight, or seven, nine. Awesome. Okay, log of point four three. What will that be? Negative What about log of negative three? Error. Error. Uh oh. Error. 